Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about how you can level up your Steam Deck. If you're using the Steam Deck to play Steam games only, you're wasting the potential of the Steam Deck, as it can do so much more. If you're into this kind of stuff, gaming handhelds, especially the Steam Deck, emulation, mods, cheats, stuff like that, please subscribe as this is basically all we talk about. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'm showing is emulation. Let's be real, you're not buying a Steam Deck to play Steam games only. And gaming emulation on the Steam Deck is insane. First you will need Emu Deck. I think most people have this already. If you don't, I have a video on installing this. I'll put the link in the description. So once this is installed, you've got all these emulators. You can play your retro games on RetroArch. You've got PlayStation Portable on PPSSPP. You've got PlayStation 1, Duck Station. Even up to the PlayStation 3, RPCS3. You've got your current generation, Switch. With Yuzu and Ryu Jinx. You can even play point and click games, those DOS games on Scum VM. So this has got you covered. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about enhancing tools for the Steam Deck. First one, Cryo Utilities. This is a free tool. Just download and use it. It gives you a free performance boost to your Steam Deck. In short, it lets you change the swap size from 1 gigabyte to 16 gigabytes. Swap size is like Windows Virtual Memory. It reserves a portion of your hard disk to be used like RAM. Next up is Decky Loader. So when you're in game mode, you click the three dots and you can see at the bottom, you've got a power plug button. This is the Decky Loader and you can install different types of plugins. Uh, one I'd recommend is this Steam Grid DB. So once you've got this, when you go into your gaming mode, you press start onto your game and you can see we've got an extra option, change artwork. And you can just select your artwork here. So you can change the artwork of your games, which looks very, very good. So I'd recommend to install this. Now we are in the realm of non-Steam games. First, if you have games on Epic Game Store or GOG, you need Heroic Games Launcher. With this, you can load your Epic Games library or your GOG library and click on it and you can just install the game on your Steam Deck and it even supports cloud saves. If you'd like to install other non-Steam games, most likely from the web, go to your Discover Store, Discover Software Center here. And then search for Qbit, this Qbit Torrent. This program is a BitTorrent program on your Steam Deck and you can download your BitTorrent files here. And since most of the time when you download those games, they're ISO format. So go to the Discover Store again and type in Mount ISO. You should be able to find this Mount Unmount ISO. So download this. And when you go to your game, let's say this one, Sea of Stars, it's an ISO format. I can just right click it and then click mount. And it's mounted here. And I could do the setup. Once you've downloaded the game, you can install them by Steam. Add a non-Steam game here. Add a non-Steam game. And then you can browse for your setup file. Let's say the Sea of Stars ISO that I mounted. Like this. This is one way. This is the easiest way, I think. Another way is to use Lutris. And here you can press a press the plus button on the top left and then add the locally installed game and select your exe and etc. This is uh, a different way. Um, it's not as easy, but you can actually define your prefix folder, which I won't talk in detail here, but maybe I'll do a separate video. So these are the programs you need for installing your non Steam games. So once you've installed the games, they might not work out of the bat. So Get this Proton Tricks. Go to your Discover Store and download Proton Tricks. And you can see here, once I've opened Proton Tricks, you can see my non Steam games. So Cyberpunk 2077, I'm going to load into it. So, what this does, I can install the dependencies required for this game. Some games require DirectX, Visual C, .NET, stuff like that, that it's not included into the Steam. I could do that. So let's say here, if I go into it, I can run Wine Config and I could change the Windows version. Some games probably run on Windows 7, some need Windows 10. And also, I could also install a Windows DLL component, which like stuff like DirectX. So I've got here D3D compiler, DirectX, and I've got um, some .NETs I might need to install, and also Visual C. VC run, stuff like this. These are the visual Cs. A lot of games need these dependencies, which aren't included in your Steam Deck. All right, so you might need to download that for your prefix folders. All right, and another 
thing you might need is Proton Up QT. So also this program you can download from the Discover Store. So this allows you to add different versions of Proton. So if one version doesn't work, one Proton version doesn't work, you can download newer ones or older ones that do work. So you can try these out. So you need the Proton Up QT program to install these. So this is also very useful. So another program I'd like to recommend is FlatSeal. So download it from your Discover Store. This program lets you manage your applications on your Steam Deck. And a very good example is I get a lot of viewers saying that they can't access their SD card with this program or with that program. You probably need this. So for example, FileZilla, I can't access my SD card. So go to the file system and then you add here and then go to your SD card, copy the location copy and you paste it here and your FileZilla should be able to access your SD card. While we're on the topic, if you want to transfer files between your PC and your Steam Deck, other than using a USB stick, you could use FileZilla. This is an FTP program. It's the same as the Windows version. So I don't think there's any trouble here. You can download this on your Steam Deck. Also, another program I like to use is Warpinator. If you're on the same network, so your PC and your Steam Deck are on the same network, you could actually just use this program and you can transfer files with this. All right, if you have made it to the video this far, please give a thumbs up to the video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I think the programs I've mentioned earlier, they're pretty basic. I think most people already have it. Now we're going into Super Saiyan mode. All right, we're now in the advanced section. We're going to install mods, trainers, cheats for your games on the Steam Deck and we can do all this on the go. So the first thing I want to recommend is Wiimod. This is very hard to install on the Steam Deck because it's designed for Windows and that's why it's really hard to get it running on the Steam Deck but we've managed to get it running. So let's boot this up. So I'm running a game through Wiimod. So I'm going to load up Elden Ring. I have already have this game mapped to my Wii mod, you have to select the EXE manually. And once you, you do it once, it's already linked. So I'm just going to boot up the game. And you can see here, it's got the Bandai Namco screen. That's something I'd like you to remember. All right. So once I've loaded into the game, the top right here should change to playing. Yes, now it's playing. And then I can toggle these cheats on and off. So unlimited HP, God mode, stuff like that. All right. So this is something you might want to have if you're an advanced user. So let's quit Wiimod. Let's quit the game. All right. And another program is Vortex Mod Manager. This allows you to install mods like skins, um, expansions that are fan made. And I've already also installed this. So I used Lutris to install Vortex. So there's a reason for this because I've actually installed Vortex with the same prefix folder as my Wii mod. So that's uh, that's why I don't need to change my game folder back and forth because uh, Vortex and Wii mod and my game are all into the same prefix folder. And you can only do this with um, Lutris. You can't do it with Steam. If you add a non-Steam game, it, it creates a prefix folder by itself. So this is why I'm using um, Lutris to install Vortex. That's the tip. So let's say I'm in Vortex. Here are my games that I've, I've used to manage and Elden Ring. And as you can see, I've got some mods here. So you need Elden Mod Loader. That's definitely you need this to enable mods. And then I've got pause the game and skip the intro. So that Bandai Namco intro you just saw, since I've enabled it, it should be gone now. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's open Wii Mod again. Play. And we can stop Vortex. We can close that now since we've already done it. All right. So now we're running Wii Mod again to load the game. All right. So now Elden Ring. Let's boot up the game. Let's boot up the game. And we should skip that Bandai Namco white like intro screen. So let's see if the mod works. Yeah, see, we're directly in the title screen. And then we also got pause the game. So we should be able to pause the game now. Let's check it out. 
So once you've set it up like this, you can just mod the game and cheat the game. See that? Now I press P, and then the... and it pauses. Yeah, that's the mod. Alright? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so if you have difficulties installing Wiimod, I totally understand. It's not easy to install. There's another program called Cheat Happens, Aura. It's similar to Wiimod. It's easy to install, but there's a drawback because most of the cheats are blocked behind a paywall. So to install that, you need something called Steam Tinker Launch. So go to Proton Up QT, the program I talked about earlier, and then add a version. And you can see here, compatibility tool, you see Steam Tinker Launch, and you can install it from here. So once that's installed, select the game. I'm going to use um, Starfield because Wiimod doesn't work for Starfield because I, I think it crashes. So go into its properties and then compatibility, change it to Steam Tinker Launch. All right. And then once you launch the game, you'll see that Steam Tinker Launch loads and you have a two second window to press the game menu to do the settings. All right, so make sure, get ready. You have two seconds. This one, you have to press the main menu to go into the settings. If you don't, the game just launches without any settings done or the settings you've done before. So you can see there's a lot of settings to do with this. This is a very useful tool, but I won't go into detail today. Today, I'm gonna to tell you that you can do this. Go to the game menu and you can fork a custom command. So here, use custom command. I've set it to the aura.exe, which I've downloaded. It's similar to Wiimod. And then I've selected for custom command, all right? And then save and play. And you can see that my game will boot up and also it will fork the Aura app. That's how I can use the cheats. All right, see so here, this is the cheat happens. And this is my game. They're loading at the same time. All right, so let me control, uh, sorry, alternate tab. Let me go into, this is the, this is the cheat happens thing. I'm gonna select Starfield, that's the recent game and it's active. So I'm gonna use trainer, so boot into the game for us. All right, let it load. All right, see here, it says game found. It's already linked up because my game is loaded with this together. And then activate trainer. All right, this is the game, this is the game. Let's just continue. Okay, and then back here, as you can see, subscribe to unlock. You see all those cheats, the God Mode Unlimited Health, they're blocked behind the paywall. Uh, there's one three, it's um, the infinite ammo. So infinite ammo, I could still use this. So that's pretty cool. I could still use it. Um, yeah, so do you want to see it in action? Yeah, let me show you it in action. Might take some time to load the game though. But it doesn't matter. This is the final tip that I'm going to give you. So if you're a pro user, gamer on the Steam Deck, these are the apps that I definitely recommend you using. You can do a lot of things other than just playing the Steam games. You can play emulator games. You can cheat your games, mod your games all on the go. See here? See my, see my ammo? It's going, it's not going down. 163, it's going up and then it goes back to 163. So I've got in infinite ammo, so the cheat works. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I'll leave it here. I'm just gonna quit. So if this video helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Later.